What it do, what it do, everybody appreciate y'all for tuning in to what that being said. It's your host, Bougie Brother Sean, and you're in tune to another show. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel and like this video. Let's go ahead and get started, man. I got my special guest again came in for me. Got the homie, Dame Diddy in the house. Got Chris Dog in this piece, and then I got the main man, Premier, man. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get the show popping and cracking. All right, first question. We got Lil Uzi Vert releasing his first single that's supposed to be coming out on his new new album. Um, that single and the video is Futsa Shuffle 2020. Now, Chris Dog, do you think this is like the single that supposed to be or do you think that this is the single that's going to get him pushing and get the album out properly or do you think he need another single before he drops that album i think he needs to drop maybe three at least three or four or something this ain't the one this isn't the one i don't even know how to say the title to this song i watched the video he got cool little dance moves and stuff he, it's going to appeal a lot of colors in the video or, mm -hmm. i don't know louis Bird is i'm not a fan of his his lyrics are trash, but his beats make people dance, and that's what people are looking for. But I still don't think this is going to push his album by no means. Um, he, he needs to come with something else, maybe a hot feature with somebody else, and hopefully that'll be something that'll propel him. I'm sure he'll get looks because he's he's popular and, and he has the look that the, the, the young kids like. And hopefully it works out for him. I just don't think this song is the one. Maybe put out a song where we can actually say the title. Mm. All right. Well, Premier, do you think that this is going to be the single? Or, you know, since it's kind of dancey and, or whatnot? Or do you think he needs another one with, with a feature on it? Do I think he needs another one with a feature on it before he drops the album? Yeah. Then, yeah, probably so. Because it helps to always tease the appetite or whet the appetite, I should say. But... With that being said, if he chose to drop the album right after this single, then it is what it is. Like, it is the right single. Louis Vert at this point is at the point in his career where he can kind of do what he wants, and, you know, he, he, he has the freedom to do that. I also cannot pronounce the name of the song. I also do not really care to even check for the song or listen to it most more than I have to. Uh, but right or wrong, like, I don't personally like the song. But, yeah, I mean, it's, he has his audience, man. It's going to move the way it needs to move. Okay, okay. Uh, Dame, are you a Lil Uzi Vert fan? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. Never right. have, never <laughs> will be. But I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what I know. Okay. The kids are killing this joint on TikTok. Within minutes, this had millions of views. Yep. The kids are dancing to this, singing along with it. They know the name of it. So uh, my daughter knows the name of it. All her friends are doing all of these group dances and all of that to it. So does he need another song? Probably for the old heads, but for the youngins, they perfectly happy with this because the youngins don't care anyway. They don't care about longevity. All they care about is what's hot right this minute, and they're going to care about the next hot thing in two weeks. So he should have capitalized as soon as he put that track out because, like I said, he turned over multiple millions of views within the first hour of releasing his video. Yeah, you hit it right on the nail, Dame. TikTok, putting this on TikTok was like a million dollar bag right then and there. Uh, and, and I personally think that even, I'm going to give you the point, Dame, but I think that he could even drop another one based on the amount of love he's getting on this particular song. But like to your point, he, the kids are flocking over this. This has been popping for months and months. Once he drops his album, which should be before the end of the first quarter, yeah, this is gonna, this is really gonna blow up. So yeah, kudos to Lil Uzi Vert. Definitely like the little dance and how you you didn't you didn't fix the little dance move, creating new moves and stuff, man. But can't wait for that album to come out. All right, next question. We are gonna get into my man Drake and Future. They just dropped a single off of off of potentially the what what a time to be alive project the single was uh, life is good so chris dog after listening to this single and hearing what a time to be alive one do you think with this single what a time to be alive two is going to live up to the potential of what a time to be alive one what a time to be alive all right 
Um, I think that it was a good single. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the video more than I enjoyed the song. Right. Drake's uh, verse was mediocre at best, but the video itself pushed the song. And I, I like it. I think the album with them two collabing together will sell. Not sure how lyrically sound it would be because at this point I feel like Drake is doing a lot of rambling. Even though I really <laughs> like him as an artist, I just feel like he's at that point in his career where he can do it and everybody's just going to listen anyway. So I'm, I'm okay with the collab. I think it's going to sell. Like all his albums sell. Anything that Drake puts his stamp on is going to be big. So. If that's the question, yes, it's, it's going to sell, and the video is hot. The song is fairly hot. I like it. Dame, how's this collab going to look for Drake's body of work? Is this going to look good, better? Uh, what does it look like? Well, first of all, I just want to go back to Sun. I, I can't believe you said you're actually looking forward to Lil Uzi's album. <laughs> but uh, before... Uh, so uh, this video was crazy. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. Anybody that knows me know I don't fuck with Future at all, but I actually enjoyed this music video. It was dope. I thought Future's verse on this joint was actually really dope. I like the change of the beat and everything like that. Now, I actually think that if they put a What a Time to Be Alive, first of all, I hated the first one. Let's get that out of the way. Second of all, I think if they put a What a Time to Be Alive part two out right now, I actually think it'll go platinum mm -hmm. because of all the revenue now that uh, they can actually start counting YouTube views towards uh, album sales, so that's going right. to go platinum no matter what. But I actually think it's going to be pretty disappointing for what most fans are actually expecting. I felt like that Drake future magic has sailed in, in a song or two. Yeah, that'll work, but ain't nobody trying to hear no full project from them. Future is barely, barely above water right now. His last couple of projects have barely done anything, period. So he needs Drake. Drake's still doing his... Uh, England accent thing right now so I think he needs to go ahead focus get this album out because I really think this What a Time to Be Alive 2 can potentially start putting the slowdown and a break on Drake's career ooh ooh okay Premier do you think this What a Time to Be Alive could be maybe the start of the downfall of Drake the start of the downfall for Drake uh no I don't think it'll be a start of the downfall uh, you know Drake when you reach a certain pinnacle, you really can't get above it. And Drake has been at that pinnacle for now a few years now. Uh, to start a downfall of something, you just have to start losing fans. And Drake is not going to lose fans. They're going to be there. They're going to support this project. Do I think the project is going to match what the first one was or be bigger than the first one? No. Uh, as mentioned, Future is not one of the top popping artists right now. Why well, is he still relevant? Yes. Drake relevant, of course. But to grow or to get better, bigger and better, is this going to be the pinnacle or the the um, uh, the MVP trophy of their careers? No, this is something that's being put out just because they need to put more content out, basically. Yeah, I, I don't respect none of the future slander. I am definitely a future fan here. I just don't understand. He like the label gave him like. 50 million or something. So he got to be doing something right. And everyone seems to be following don't down the future the lane. Don't so it, it, yeah, that's kind of interesting, but I'm definitely gonna have to give it to Chris Dog. Chris Dog hit it on the, on the nail with the no slander. And he, and just like you said, the video was hard. If it wasn't for the video, the song would actually pretty much be subpar. Me personally, I am looking forward to the what what a time to be alive. Is it going to be better? It's going to probably be the same. And the first with that be what a time to be alive was about a six. So that's six laugh, out of ten. That's laughable, actually. So that shit was like a two. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I'm just crossing my fingers, hope that they knock this one out the park. But like I said, man, you just keep making videos, and that'll probably save the project right right there. All right, next question. We're still on Drake. Drake just also dropped another video with another single called War. War came out, and you know, he's in the snow, skiing and stuff, you know, doing his little drizzy, drizzy Drake thing. Uh, my question is to you, Chris Dog, Mr. Clone of Drizzy, uh, do you see a Drake album coming out in the first quarter, especially based on him, you know, doing collabs with Future and potentially having a project out with Future. You see him coming in the first quarter. I can see him dropping in the first quarter. Uh, the, the War single itself 
Uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out why it's called war. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out why the hell he keep on using this island accent. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell he was talking about in this entire song. I'm sorry. I don't know what Drake is doing right now. I have no idea. And I hope if he does put an album out, that is better than that song. Mm. War is a horrible song. It's a horrible song. and, and the, the, He's taking advantage of the people. Mm. That's the problem right now because everything he says and does, people are going to cling to and love. And what he's saying and doing right now does not deserve love. Okay, yeah. These last two questions that we had, and he had a worse verse with Future on the same track as him. Okay, yeah, That's not saying much. And that... And, the, and like I said, again, the war song, I'm sorry. The video was cool, I guess, but what the hell was he talking about? Everybody, listen to the song and then get back at me. Don't just get mad at me because I said that. Listen to the damn song. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right, Premier. Sorry. I hated it. How, are you, how do you feel about this war single that uh, Drake dropped? Uh, I, I agree with Chris, though. Like, you know, it's called war, but it doesn't feel like shots are really, really, really being fired in the rap game. I mean, he's probably firing shots to situations he deals with in life but when you're living on your your your, your mountain top that's a hundred thousand feet tall and I don't even know anything about I don't know who you're firing shots at there's a mentions of you know people who were on the song that did certain things in this camp you know I I, I don't I, I don't know anything about it I, I'm not there so I don't think that's a great single to drop if he does drop another project in the first quarter as he drops this project with future it's a money grab uh, at that point, it's kind of disrespectful in a way because mm. now you're competing against yourself and people have to choose in a way of whether they want to pick your album or the future album. But, I mean, Drake's been in this money grab. This dude released uh, a project of all his old songs just last year, I think it was, where you dropped all your old songs just to drop something. So hopefully if he does drop something that's of quality, but, I mean, this isn't... The war is not the move. The war is not the move. Dame, is the war the move? Nah, that song was trash. Uh, the music video was boring as shit. Uh, I turned it off like a minute in. Uh, so that was horrible. Um, but I will say the one thing I will say is that Drake has an uh, actual scope of the music industry that most average people don't actually get a chance to see. Uh, he jumps on a lot of people's uh, music from the UK. He gets on a lot of people's music from the island. So he gets a lot of love around the world. And he's basically established, establishing himself in genres of music because of these youngins fucking up hip hop. Mm. So I think he is actually doing something really smart, even though it is super trash. Mm. So will he drop in the first quarter? Who gives a fuck? Like when he drops, everybody's going to flock to it. It's going to get a shitload of listens just because it's Drake. Even if somebody came to you and said, hey, that new Drake album whack, you still going to listen to it. So it's still going to get streams. You might even go and purchase it. So I think Drake's scope on the industry is actually really smart. He sees what other artists are doing. He copies it. He mimics it. And he gets ahead of the curve before everybody else can, whether it's good or not. Yeah, this is, man, I'm going to have to split this one with Premier and Dame. Um, I think both of you guys made some really, really good points. Drake has an insight, man, and he's kind of ahead of the game. This Afropunk sound, this Afropunk vibe is kind of been in the sound in the wave at least in the last three years that's like been real heavy and drake's been been in that you know and then premiere to your point man you know it doesn't if he drops this quarter yeah it's gonna conflict with with the money that he's trying to make with everybody else and i think he's just a little bit brighter than that so i don't i definitely don't think he's gonna drop in the first quarter and I, I and like you said again, Dame, you're absolutely right. He's just very strategic, and he wouldn't be using this funky ass accent if it really wasn't potentially giving him the proper bag that we don't see right here from our view. So you know, big shouts out to that, Dame. You gets that one, uh, Dame. You actually get two for that. Chris Dog, you got one, and Premier, you got one. And we're gonna go on a quick commercial. And we'll be right back. The Coils by Nature Beard Kit will keep your beard healthy and looking refreshed. First, you want to get your beard nice and clean with the Beard Face Cleanser and Shaving Foam. Next, you're going to want to lock in all that moisturized goodness with the Beard Butter. You're going to put some of this in your fingers and just rub it into your beard right on top of that moisturizer just to make sure you stay fresh and feel fresh all day. 
And lastly, you want to give that shine and sheen with the beard oil so your beard can be as fresh and as amazing as you are. And welcome back, man. Yes, we are going on to our next topic, which is good look, bad look, or no look. And this particular one, a Bad Boys for Life just dropped, and it actually got $100 million in box, score, box office in the first weekend. Uh, but... DJ Khaled is actually executive producing the Bad Boys for Life soundtrack. My my question is going to premiere is is DJ Khaled producing the Bad Boys for Life soundtrack. Good look, bad look, or no look? So for DJ Khaled, here's the thing: it's a great look. It's not just a, gr a good look; it's a great look. Bad Boys is a franchise that is proven, it's tested and proven. It's a franchise that has only gotten better as this went on. And I haven't seen the movie yet, but from what I hear, this movie beats the second movie, which I think was incredible. Definitely better than the first one. So if it's growing that way, so should the music and the way it's done and the culture of hip-hop should grow along with it because that's what it's founded upon. You do Go back to the first couple of movies, the soundtracks were not really put together for the movie, but kind of put together uh, based on the songs that were already out and the songs that kind of fit with the movie in a way. Right. This is the project where it's actually put together for the movie. So instead of them going out to license songs, they're creating songs and things and, so and sounds and vibes for the actual movie. And if the movie's already doing that well, that means the music matches it. Khaled's in the movie, so who else to have better than to executive produce the movie? And then Khaled is Khaled. And another one. So great. <laughs> I could dig it. I could dig it. Dame, how you feeling about it, man? Good look, bad look, or no look? DJ Khaled doing this uh, soundtrack. For DJ Khaled, it's a good look. Uh, for your ears, I think it's an okay look. Like, all right, so I saw the movie. It's a great movie. It is not better than the second movie, but it is a good movie. Mm. I enjoyed it. Khaled is in a movie, barely, but he is there. <laughs> uh, but look, the music actually fits the whole Miami vibe of this movie. Like, listening to the soundtrack... It's got a good three and a half decent songs up there. It's not something that you're going to go back and listen to over and over again. And I want to say the Bad Boy soundtrack actually has good soundtracks for the first two movies. I think this is the worst as in I'm going to listen to it and just chill out soundtrack. But it's got some cool songs like the, the uh, Rick Ross and Bryson Tiller where they did the Touch Me, Tease Me remix. And uh, there's a, uh, um, I forgot how you say it, but it's a joint with Jaden Smith on it. And that one's got a cool vibe to it, too, where uh, they sampled uh, This Is The Rhythm Of The Night. So it's got some cool vibes up there. It's a good look for DJ Khaled. But as far as you just chilling and listening to it in your leisure, it's, you're not going to rock with it. Mm. Ooh, okay. Chris Dog. Uh, did you check it out, man? Was and did DJ Khaled do his justice? Good look, bad look, or no look? I went through it. I, I didn't go through it in detail, but I, I liked the way that he was able to mix all the different genres and rap, some reggaeton. He had uh, some uh, dance music. It was it was a, a collaboration of different artists from different genres, and it fit for the movie. And that's what good producers do. That's what he should have did, and that's what that was his job. I think he 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 reached that um, his goal to for a soundtrack. You you're not gonna get um you're not gonna you know you're not gonna get that feel for an album album when you listen for a soundtrack. Very very rarely do you get that um, feel like a uh, dang I can't even call it movie boomerang like boomerang boomerang soundtrack. That's one of the things that just a excellent album that you don't get those on soundtracks all the time but i think he his his um objective was reached by uh able to put out music that matched the movie because all kind of people are going to watch this movie not just uh the black culture yeah you would never get a soundtrack like we did back in the late 90s but i'm definitely gonna have to give this to premiere um the reason why is because this is a great look dj Khaled was able to reach out into different cultures in Miami. You know, he, he had the, the hip hop sound, he had the samples, and then he had the reggaeton in there. And, and it wasn't a lot, you know, he put, I guess it was like 11 tracks on there. And he def and to your point, he definitely gave you that Miami vibe. I'm sure if you watched it, I didn't watch the movie, but I'm sure if you watched it and heard the music in the movie, it was totally relatable. It was totally just, everything was perfect. 
with, with what DJ Khaled did on this soundtrack. Uh, next question. Now, it's Travis Scott. Travis Scott just released his compilation project. Actually, he released it at the end of, of 2019. But at the beginning of the year, the numbers came in and it showed that he put up a whopping 154 units that were sold. Now, my question is, after listening to it and seeing the numbers that it actually got, Dame, was this project more quantity trying to get it out before the end of the year or was was there some quality product on on this project i did an album review for this this shit is trash Ooh. um don't Ooh. ever mention this album to me again oh, i will man, never i will never listen to it again look travis scott is in my opinion well look shake west is actually pretty cool but uh travis scott is the heart and soul of what they tried to do I don't want to hear no knockoff Travis Scott's. We already got that in Kanye West right now. So I do not want to hear that shit. Take that somewhere. He really was just trying to rush something out just to get it popping. They probably had those songs sitting seriously. People started asking them questions. So they went ahead and pushed it out. Uh, the rollout was cool, but I'm not rocking with the songs. And mm. I'm pretty sure that they're going to rush something out. Uh, Don Tolliver ended up on Eminem's project. Sounds like a broke Akon. But uh, <laughs> I'm not fucking with what they're doing, man. And I, I'm not rocking with this, the project at all. Yikes, yikes. Maybe going downhill on a, on, a, on a bad spiral with Travis Scott. What about you, Chris Dog? How do you feel about this Jack Boys? Was it just something that was rushed? Uh, it's hard for me to say that it was rushed. Um, I th feel like we put putting Travis Scott's name on it and the the music didn't scream Travis Scott at all. Mm. Uh, I th if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it was seven or eight tracks on the album. I, it, it, was, it didn't give you a lot of any. There was no volume there. And it felt like he took a back seat on the whole album. I didn't like it. I felt like it was nothing to listen to. Looking at an album with seven tracks on it and it, it, it wasn't appealing. I think that, uh, I, that's why I said, how can you rush something that only has seven songs on it? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because it was the end of the year that wanted to, I don't get it. I don't get it. But like I said, I didn't get a Travis Scott feel, so it's hard for me to just shit on Travis Scott because most things that Travis Scott puts out his album-wise are, are solid. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like it. Well, the highest in the room, you know, they did a remix, put that on there. Well, high, did you like highest in the room? It, the it was okay. The album I'm talking, I'm speaking as far as the album as a whole goes. That's okay. the only way I can speak on this. And, okay. and like I said, when I'm listening to anything that has Travis Scott name on it, like when I think of superstars, I think uh, I'm looking for his stamp, and I didn't feel it on that. I didn't, I didn't see it. All these songs was done in one studio session, bro. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. What about you, Premier? Did you think this Jack Boys was worth it, man? Are you are you rocking this headed to the club or? going to a get together so as far as quantity and quality definitely it was more about quantity but i can't knock a lot of it because that is the generation we live in and that's the generation that produced this particular project i mean that's what it's all about uh you have a couple of songs that can get bumped on the radio so if, uh, if you're headed to the club and it's on actually be in the radio already yeah it's something i'm gonna play because i'm going to the radio probably not but, I mean, that's where we live in. That's the time we live in. Out West is a song that, although it's not the best uh, song out right now or the one that's going to be one of the top 40 songs, I mean, it plays on the radio well. It sounds well. It sounds good. And you have some hot names, Young Thug. You have Travis Scott on it. So, I mean, it's something that's going to work. But by, by all means, you can tell that it was more about quantity and getting the project out than it's about quality. But... Who puts quality out much anymore? And the ones that do put quality out kind of get knocked for not putting out enough music. So, I mean, it's kind of like, which way do you want to play? Gee, yeah, man, you guys are you guys are real rough on these kids, man. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Even though that there's not a lot of people feeling like these things are hot, you you're hearing it on the radio constantly, 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 constantly. So, yeah, this is quantity, but it does grow on you and and you can tell why it made made and is getting the units that it's getting but i'm still gonna give it to dame man shout out to that all right man we're going to number six question number six we're going to nick cannon man now if y'all didn't know nick cannon has been putting out some serious disses towards eminem 
And this was prior to Eminem dropping his album. Now, prior to Eminem dropping his album also, he put out the disc cut on Fat Joe's song, uh, Fat Joe's album called Lord Above. Now, my question is, dang, do you feel like even though we didn't hear much dissing on Eminem's album, do you feel like Eminem should address anything or these disses that's coming from Nick Cannon? I mean, he did give Nick a little sub. Uh, he said some people get the kill shot, others are barely nicked. Uh, but aside from the little sub that he gave to Nick, I don't feel like he, it was required for him to actually go out and respond. As much as I like Nick Cannon and everything he does business-wise, movies, uh, I think he's really cool. He puts a lot of young artists on and everything like that. Nobody is taking Nick Cannon's rap career serious. Every episode of Wildin' Out, the joke is on Nick Cannon's rap career. So why would Eminem actually even take time to even diss him? I actually thought it was corny the fact that Eminem even did like a whole track. Like it's like, come on now, like it's Nick Cannon. You're not anybody is gonna outrap Nick Cannon. So I don't feel like Eminem should have wasted his time responding to Nick. Should Nick have went on went in on Eminem? I mean, he's trying to do whatever he can uh, to get popping. At the same time, he was responding to Eminem. It's not like he started it. Exactly. Eminem started it in, uh, back again after years. Uh, but then again, Eminem probably heard the interview with T.I. and felt like Nick Cannon was kind of inflaming things again, too. So you never know the state of mind of any of these artists. They all like, you know, take everything personal. I like both people. OK, Chris Dog, should Eminem go at Nick Cannon? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's not it. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Uh, the, the way that Nick Cannon came at Eminem had feels of, I don't know, Weird Al Yankovic. I, <laughs> I mean, it was it was spoofy and, you know, it was him just trying to destroy a giant and he had no chance at even really fighting, to be honest. Hey, it was funny. People listened to it. It got a little internet buzz, but we all know Nick Cannon is not a uh, well, he considers himself a rapper, but he's not a rapper, rapper, and Eminem is, and he's one of the greatest of all time. So, you know, I, he he gave him a little, he gave him a little something just for speaking on him, but it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth, you know, going into detail or actually giving a whole lot of respect to it. So, I think he did what he needed to do as far as this go. And Nick Cannon, you know, that was his old lady. He, he got to stand up for some. I mean, his kids see this. <laughs> you got to get some kind of respect, but. You know, <laughs> You know, that's all I got to say. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Premier. Now, did you hear any of these Nick Cannon disses by, by any chance? chance? Yeah, I heard all of them because I'm a fan of, you know, rap and especially diss tracks to see how people do. And I respect, you know, Nick Cannon's uh, creative ability in a way to listen to it. Do I feel as if Eminem needs to respond? No, right. hell no. Like, there's no reason to respond. <laughs> like, here's the thing. A couple of things. First thing I'm going to say is when it comes to Eminem, he's Eminem. He's one of the most feared rappers there are to battle against in the world. Secondly, Nick, uh, I'm sorry, Eminem has always had a, a, a career or examples of taking shots at people. I mean, he took shots at Britney Spears. He's done taking shots at like uh, Iggy Azalea. He's taking shots at Elton John, the Backstreet Boys, and all these people. That's what he does. That's what Eminem does. So, he probably came across something, maybe it was a T.I. interview that was mentioned, where he seen something and he took a shot at Nick. And it wasn't the whole verse, it was just a couple of bars. And obviously Nick needs to say something, but Eminem would be doing him a favor if he responded to him or responded to him by going on his show, any of that stuff. So Eminem did what he's supposed to do. Took his little jab, said his little part. Nick responded, did what he got to do. But for him to go play in the field with Nick Cannon and Nick tried to pull a little move with the, the the quotes about how uh, Eminem feels about black women or whatever it was, try to pull the race card to get some followers, and that didn't work. It's like, dude, man, it's rap. Like, there's nothing there's nothing off the table when it comes to these battle raps. We've heard people talk about mothers, kidnapping, killing, raping, pilgrimage, all that, you know? So Eminem need, does not need to respond. He shouldn't respond. Did the right thing. M is one of the best rappers ever to touch the microphone. Dame, you hit it on the nail. I mean, Nick Cannon just rapping period is uh, is the biggest joke on Wildin' Out. So 
for anyone to respond to any type of Nick Cannon's raps would be like losing. That's an L to respond to an L, like period. So, you know, unfortunately, Nick Cannon's rap career has never been on, even though, and see, another thing is Eminem likes to poke. You, you made a good point, Premier. Eminem likes to poke at folks who really can't protect themselves lyrically, <laughs> you know, and it kind of, for me personally, it kind of takes away from the diss or the shade that he tends to throw because you don't really hear retaliation back, you know, and then when you do hear retaliation like Machine Gun Kelly, it's, you know, it's not as strong as you would have felt it like. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to give it to Dame. Dame. I mean, everyone was right, but Dame, you know, you, you hit it on the nail. It, his rap's been a joke since he started rapping. And I don't think that ever that's ever going to change. So, you know, you can poke at him all you want. And this, this rap, it's never going to change. So, with that being said, we got one more question. We about to go on to break. And we're going to finish this episode off for you. Be right back. back with the last question of the show we are getting into french montana and 50 cent now just recently on social media they've been going back and forth just kind of throwing a lot of shade 50 talking about french got a uh a leased bugatti and french comes around and brings back some old news about 50 cent snitching and and him helping out takashi's biopic and how he's all associated with that my question is to you, Premier. Does French still have a point of calling out 50 for his snitching back in the day? Everybody's always going to have a point because it happened. I mean, so yeah, but does that make it to where it's the only speaking point? It's like, nah, man, move on. Like, the only people that could really, really talk about the whole 50 snitching thing was probably Ja Rule and Murder Inc. because mm. that's who it was claimed against. After that, you had a little beef between the locks and 50. And the locks can speak upon it because it's like you're only like a couple, you know, minutes removed from when it happened. But 20 years later, come on, dude. Like, it's over, man. It's over. So, yeah, you can speak upon it. But does it mean anything? Is going to hold any weight? No. Actually, it's all better marketing for 50. Mm. Okay. Chris Dog, does 50 Cent being called a snitch hold any weight these days? Or is that just, uh, oh, whatever? I mean, they know what he is. His, he's, um... He's that type of artist that's going to be on social media and that's going to slap at people all the time. And that was French Montana's defensive mechanism. It was it was what he used to try to get back at him. And it was valid. It's valid. It's valid. You can't take away that he did it. So, you know, it, it it's not really relevant. I don't, I don't care to even talk about it, but the fact that French Montana can lease a Bugatti is good enough for me. I would, I <laughs> right. I mean, shit, he got some kind of money. Ain't nobody putting that in nobody's hand. But, yeah, I don't really care about the subject matter at all. I feel like, you know, French Montana is damn near fizzled out. And 50 Cent, he stays relevant because he like to keep on talking. So, you know, maybe French Montana is trying to take a page out of 50 book here. Mm. Okay. Well, what about you, Dame? I mean, I mean does, does snitching hold any any weight these days, or or you know, is Fifty just just is anyone going to be able to stop Fifty from doing his shenanigans these days? Look, man, uh, I don't. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how Fifty avoided that whole snitch bubble from Murder Inc. and Ja Rule putting out the actual police reports showing that he snitched. But being with Dr. Dre and Eminem actually comes with a lot of weight to it. <laughs> and uh, I think that's how the only way he had dodged that bullet. But let's talk about the real thing, man. Neither one of these artists' music is relevant at all. French Montana's last album, Flop, he tried to go ahead and add songs on there that were old as hell just to inflate his numbers. Nobody checks for 50 Cent's music whatsoever. Both of these guys are pretty much ambassadors at this point for a whole bunch of different things. So they're going to continue to make money. Most of the things that people care about with 50 is they love the trolling and they love power. 
Everything else, nobody <laughs> actually gives two shits about. In French Montana, some people fuck with the liquor, the, his, his liquor from Ciroc. Most people don't. He can afford a Bugatti. I can't. I don't give two shits about this Bugatti argument. So uh, both of these niggas' careers is, as rappers is pretty much a rap. You're pretty much solid on that, Dame, man. I mean, they're both capping. And, and the funny part about it is in between the, the, these rants and this back and forth on Instagram, French dropped the album, to your point, and it was very trash. But he definitely used that with the 50 tobacco. And I, I just I just think it, it's all a, a big facade. I mean, and then Dame hit it on the nail, too. Like, like we just going to forget about, you know, 50 being a snitch and... And the paperwork coming out, and you know, and and then him helping Takashi, like, aren't we connecting the dots here? But I guess we're not. But you know, Dame actually slaughtered this episode. Definitely got to give credit to him, man. And go ahead and you know, speak your justice, man. Preach, man. man. Look, shout out to Nick Cannon. <laughs> I like to work with Nick Cannon. That dude is a genius on a lot of things, man. Go check out TLC podcast. Uh, see these reviews for these whack ass albums we talked about today, like the Jack Boys, you know. I'll let them. Yes, there you have it, man. And we'll definitely catch y'all next week. Peace.